Hello, kindred spirits, and welcome back to Bits and Bob's Divination. My name is Caitlin, and together we are going to be diving in to the solar eclipse energy and how it is surging a new beginning into your life. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so welcome back, my beautiful kindred spirits, and anyone new who may be joining us here today as we explore this solar eclipse energy. Whether you're watching it here today on Monday as I post this, or if you're watching it way later into the future, this energy of this solar eclipse is going to linger with us as we continue into like the next six months. So even if you're finding this many months later, this is still probably going to be relevant and something that you could even look back on to see how this new beginning has begun to come into your life. So feel free to get yourself cozy for this one. This one's going to be really interesting. Um, I tend to not do a lot of astrological events and things like that when it comes to my readings, but because this one is so global and so big and rare, I thought let's go ahead and play around with it. So I have three different piles here, which we're going to be diving into here in a moment, but I do want to just let you all know if you're interested in looking beyond this reading and you want to look into career or love, or spirituality or specific relationship in your life or you have a question or query that's been on your mind for a while that you really want to get your nails and dive really deep into then feel free to check out the snail mail readings I have down below through my Instagram and through um, the helpful reviews that are over there as well as the description where you can find more information where I send a letter to you in the mail it's typewritten on a vintage typewriter and it is wax sealed for your eyes only uh, alongside of that they're really beautiful treasured readings that a lot of people have really enjoyed and gotten a lot out of. I put so much time and consideration into every specific reading and make sure that they're very unique to you. So do feel free to check those out down below or through my Instagram, as I said before, um, for more information. But let's go ahead and look at the piles. So for each of the three piles, I couldn't help myself but illustrate a little um, version of a solar eclipse for each of us. So here for pile number one is the silver solar solar eclipse so it's in this silver version so if you're feeling called to this pile you might be feeling called to the energy that it brings so that's pile number one here for pile number two we have the golden um, eclipse here with more of these golden hues and colors so that is pile number two and last but not least here for pile number three, it's a little bit of a mix of both. So it's both the silver gold mix eclipse. So if you're feeling called to this one, then that is pile number three. But as always, before you start heading off to the timestamps and running to your piles, I like to invite you to take a deep and cleansing breath here with me so you can really connect with your intuition, connect with the eclipse energy and see what's coming forward for you. So let's go ahead and take that deep breath together here now. And you're welcome to choose any or all of the piles, even though it is one eclipse. Um, you're welcome to see and spread it out and see if you have multiple new beginnings surging in for you. So feel free to take your time with each of these. All the timestamps will be down below in the description alongside the chapter marks of this video. And if you're curious for getting your own snail mail reading, like I said, those will be down below for all the information there. Feel free to reach out about any questions that you have around them. Um, send me a DM or email. I'd love to answer. Uh, but with all of that said, let's go ahead and get started here with pile number one. Hello group one, if you've decided to choose the silver solar eclipse, then this is the pile for you as we explore the solar eclipse and how it's going to be affecting some new beginnings on their way in for you, bringing a surge of energy towards them. We're going to be doing that with the charms, well, as well as uh, several different oracle decks here and the everyday tarot, which I'll have all of this listed down below in case you're curious. But before we really start pulling any cards here, I just want to talk about how I'm personally seeing the solar eclipse and how that's going to be kind of bleeding into your piles and looking into um, the cards as a whole. So what I really want to look into is the idea of new beginnings, because as a solar eclipse happens, basically you have the sun, the moon blocking the sun, and then the earth. The earth being the energy that we are in, right? And so if we think about these two celestial bodies and how they are lining up, 
the sun is currently being blocked by the moon. But I also don't like to see it as a blocked energy, but rather that the sun is creating this huge surge of energy, right? It like multiplies the energy that's happening to the moon right now. So both of these celestial objects, if you keep track with me here, are in uh, the Aries uh, sign, which is all about courage, independence, uh, forward motion. If it was a tarot suit, it would be the wand suit. Um, So it's very, very like bold. And so the new moon is currently coming in, blocking the sun. The new moon is all about new beginnings, fresh beginnings. So we kind of put that all together. This is how I'm kind of looking at it, is that the sun is creating a surge of energy on a really bold new project or new beginning that we are, as a whole, trying to kind of birth into the world. So we're going to be looking at it at sort of in that sort of way. So we're going to see what that new beginning is and the energy surging around it at its most basic level. I hope I explained that okay. But we're going to go ahead and begin first by looking at this new beginning, right? This is basically your moon. This is the new beginning that is on its way in for you and the per- and it's at perfect timing for you to really go after whatever shows up here. So we're going to be seeing what that is for you. So do feel free to send your own energy in. And those of you who might be or might have already watched the eclipse, this is still energy that's going to linger in our lives for about six months as we head towards the lunar eclipse. So do, you know, know that this is still going to be relevant as the week goes on. So group, it's this one here, group one. Let's see what this moon card is and reveal it. So empowerment. What I love about these cards and in general the idea of a new beginning is sometimes we can think of them very literally, right? A new beginning meaning a new job, a new career, a new family member, a new uh, friendship that came in. Something you can tangibly just like slot into your life. But empowerment isn't something that's very easily accountable you can't easily put it into a database or easily able to chunk it in and be like yes this is the time in my life where I was focusing on empowerment it's a lot harder to kind of think about it that way so I'm very curious to see what cards you get surrounding this empowerment also what I really like about this card is it's literally a person blocking out a giant sun so if that doesn't tell you that this is lining up I mean what else could but empowerment for me as this is coming forward, I'm really just getting this feeling that what is going to be most empowering for you is kind of standing in your power in a very independent or even um, interdependent way, right? Sometimes we think that we have to be very independent. We have to have our own job, our own, our own career, our own house, our own family, our own friends, and everything has to be so singular. But it, we're, we work in a community. We're, we work in a, a complex human experience and so when I'm looking at this too it's how you can empower your life not only just for you on an individual level but how you can also empower maybe others in your life too in your community and those around you and how that can continue to radiate out especially since this is a surge of energy coming in for you so let's look a little further of course and see what else is coming in and trickling down into this energy So I want to start at the bottom of the cards that I'm going to have trickling down here and work our way up. So let's see what energies are surrounding this solar eclipse and this new moon energy coming forward of empowerment. Okay, so we have the Three of Swords, as well as I'm feeling this top card too. So the Three of Swords, as well as the Two of Cups. So this might be related to relationships in your life. Like I was saying, communities, people who you connect with, um, and how those are all connected um, versus feeling very singular. And so it might be a more romantic relationship where you're feeling more empowered within it, finding a way to better communicate your needs, communicate how you're feeling with another person, especially since the Two of Cups is about deeply connecting with someone, finding a deep connection. This being a new, um, a, a new fresh start for you it could also be that a new relationship is coming in. I am getting friendship vibes, but there could also be um, a new relationship coming in that's going to be quite strong um, and one that can be quite healing. The reason why I'm feeling that is because this Three of Swords 
doesn't feel like it's happening now. It feels like it's something that's happened in the past and that you're learning from, especially with this empowerment. It really feels like you're in a place where you're not feeling like you have to continue in this cycle, continue in this heartbreak or in this um, even loss of a certain relationship in your life. And rather that new relationships are coming in and from the lens of empowerment. So I'm going to see what else is trickling down so we can get a better viewpoint on this so you have the four of pentacles as well as hmm, i think these might be our two card well maybe not we're going to do the ace of wands here i'm going to pull our final card at the top and then we'll talk about how it all connects Okay, and then the two of wands. So we have wands cards. These are ones I want to particularly look at because of that Aries energy of this um, specific solar eclipse and that it's like heavily in the Aries energy. But when I'm looking at these, what I'm seeing from what we've already talked about where you're kind of feeling more empowered, like you're feeling like you're healing from possibly a past relationship with someone or you're moving into a place in which you can now feel empowered, independent, but also connected with another person. So I kind of see this as like sometimes we have to like really grow our relationship with ourselves before we can really be with someone else um, and also to find independence within a relationship, right? So we're not, you know, kind of um, highly dependent um, on a, a person in our lives to make things better or to feel better or to work through something that there's still that level of independence despite being together or in as a couple or finding a friendship uh, so that's kind of the energy that I see at the bottom of this trickle but as we move up towards the top it really feels like where this is coming through most is this two of wands and the two of wands is all about sort of planning for the future looking towards the future and also looking at the past and how that can affect our future so especially since I was saying like it kind of feels like you're really working and moving through something that's possibly been locked up pent up for a while this feeling like you couldn't maybe move through this heartbreak maybe move through or heal I feel like you're definitely on a really good road right now where you feel like you actually have the opportunity and you maybe feel more passionate to find friends to find community to to feel empowered in a a community in a relationship where before maybe you felt like that would be something that would drag you down maybe you had um, those past experiences really dragging you down from being able to experience others in your life on such a deep and connective level in a way that maybe you felt like there was um, a lack of trust and a lack of of allowing yourself to be vulnerable with another person whereas now I feel like that might be coming in and that's sort of this surge of energy this surge of like inspiration to be able to go after this this idea this person this connection uh, so that's really what I'm seeing here mostly but I want to look further so we're going to pull um, a couple of cards here we might pull one or two we'll see but I want to see how this might be as the solar eclipse comes and wanes, I want to see how it might be affecting you as like an archetype that's coming through. Mm, I don't know. I think it's going to be this, ooh, this bottom one. And then I'll also take the other one that was on the bottom there. Okay, so you have the spy master interesting because that's where I was feeling like you had like a lack of trust and I feel like what's going to be most empowering for you is this feeling of being able to be vulnerable being able to open up your heart where you weren't able to before right this person is looking to the past they're trickling down and looking to the past here and thinking "Ooh, I might I need to hold my heart close I need to keep myself safe I'm not ready for a a deep relationship like that maybe keep things more casual whatever it might be but I feel like it's starting to trickle down into this idea where now you're feeling this opening as this this solar eclipse happens um, I feel like you see this opening now to be able to open up your heart to another whether that's through a friendship whether that's through opening yourself to a community um, whether that's online whether that's through a job whether that's through a 
event, whatever it might be, uh, but it definitely feels like you're really deeply connecting with people in a way you weren't able to before, and it's quite empowering. And so the fact that you have the spy master showing up here with knowledge and distrust, uh, now you're kind of moving in to the poet, relationships, vulnerability, all of the things we've already been talking about. To to be a poet, right, is to really use use the deepest most real words with the world sometimes we think of it as like this flowy flouncy kind of thing but poetry can be very poignant and very vulnerable and very much like a journal entry um at its purest form and so when I'm looking at this it's telling me too that you're able to really share and share your personal experiences more deeply with another person or people in your life that that's going to be quite empowering and it's going to remind you that you're not alone in your experiences nor are you alone in the world like you don't have like interdependence is that word that was coming through so much for me for you because it just feels like you've been in a place where you weren't able to express yourself that you had to be on your own that you had to do it by yourself for so long or because of this past experience that this is starting to turn around you're opening yourself up there's more vulnerability but in doing so there's also more trust and so um there's a lot of really beautiful things flourishing here for you let's go ahead and pull some charms to get those final details and see what else might be coming in and if you're enjoying this video so far do be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below and if you did see the solar eclipse i would love to hear how it went um it's still friday for me so we'll see but i'm gonna go ahead and pull you some charms so here we go group one <laughs> so let's see actually might still drop this one okay so it keeps falling on that side all right so let's go ahead and zoom you in so you can see all of the little details that have shown up here so this specific charm is the one that I was like no we need to throw this out because I want to see where it would land because this is a manipulation charm it's a charm where someone has manipulated something manipulated a situation um, it can also represent the tower in tarot but that's the I was really feeling that manipulation and it fell over here towards this side where I said you might be healing from something a heartbreak of some sort a past relationship a situation that's caused you to maybe you know close your shell to close business to not really want to work with others or be as open and and as vulnerable as maybe you had been in the past um, as a safety mechanism and so that's sort of what I was seeing here and it might be related to some sort of gaslighting manipulation um, or just a really sudden event that was outside of your and maybe another's control so looking forward though you have a lot moving to the forward side actually we have one more charm on this side let's let's pay attention to this one before we move forward so here on the spy master here on this little crow or i believe is some sort of corvid um, you have knowledge and distrust and then you have the wrench and so whenever i see the wrench a, a wrench can be an opportunity for you know fixing something but a lot of the time i think of like that phrase of like throw a wrench in it um it kind of feels like someone's thrown a wrench in something or it had they're just like trying to make something work but it's just not really working and so this is just giving us more of that context I believe um, but it does seem that you had tried to um, fix it or someone had been you know trying to fix it and it just seems like again this is something that has ended and a new beginning is emerging over here so what do we have hiding here so I didn't talk a ton about this ace of wands and clearly the charms were like you need to talk about this one so anytime an ace shows up in a tarot spread um, regardless of the suit it represents a like little seedling a very early beginning a just spark of an idea and so when I think of the ace of wands it's like a spark of an idea it is inspiration it's like when you're scrolling through your Pinterest and you're like whoa that's something I need to do so this is like inspiration this is sort of like I said it's trickling down you're feeling more inspired more opportunistic towards finding 
someone who you can connect with on that deep level. And so it seems like you've had to wait a long time to get to this point because we do have the endurance charm of the cactus because cactuses take a long time to grow, um, just like trees and other things. But I always think of them as endurance and having to also endure really harsh and difficult elements of life. But you do have the hope charm, this little honey pot. I always think of it. It makes me think of like Winnie the Pooh. Um, but there's this hope charm showing up here next to a little music um, note as well. I You can see this as a very literal like um, music note in that way, but I also think of like finding your cadence, finding your rhythm is what I'm thinking with this specific one. And your rhythm is coming in through hope. I feel like that spark of hope is growing and growing. Like it started as this little tiny flame and it's getting bigger and bigger as we look more towards this empowering energy. There's also um, this puzzle piece, which sometimes can literally just mean like there's a missing puzzle piece here that you're on the hunt for um, or on the look for. And um, you also got the cat bat here. I don't really feel this one too much, but I'll go ahead and talk about it in case you guys are. The cat bat usually represents mixing two things that don't normally mix, like oil and water. Um, like a cat bat is very much also something that is a mythical creature, right? It's not something that exists in our world as far as we know. So this is sort of also a reminder that sometimes either opposites attract or that even though this seems like a fantastical, mystical idea of maybe maybe this this um, avenue, this exploration, this empowerment, this um, feeling like you can be vulnerable with another person feels like some mystical, otherworldly thing that would never happen to you, it seems like you're starting to come around to that idea because you have two different um, charm showcasing that with the cat bat and then also this little pumpkin um, from like Cinderella which is like another fantasy element so I really feel like you're at least opening yourself up to the idea um, and that in general can be very empowering for you because you're not finding yourself putting these walls with other people in your life or immediately putting walls up before you even get the chance to trust or get to know another person or community so overall, those are all of the charms and cards that I have here for your a little eclipse here because the eclipse energy can be so poignant and so powerful um, and I just wanted to make sure you guys kind of had an idea of how it might be going for you and what you might find out of it. Like I said, yours doesn't feel very like you're getting a new job or you'll get a raise or something that feels just very easy to explain. Yours is definitely more of an energy, a um, mindset that is coming in, and that's the spark of the beginning, that's the spark of a new idea, as well as these relationships. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this reading, and if you did, do be sure to give this video a like, and let me know how the solar eclipse went for you if you saw it, or if you um, are just really feeling this energy, I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you're interested in more pick card readings like these, as well as educational videos on charm casting or more art magic to come, then do feel free to subscribe as I put out new videos every single Monday. And if you're interested in getting your own reading that's even more specific towards you and your own path, then do feel free to check out the snail mail reading options that I have down below where I send a letter to you in the mail through a typewritten letter that is wax sealed closed and just for you on any question or query that you have. I also have many other offerings like magical spell and ritual papers, queer earrings, and others, so do feel free to check those out all down below. But we're going to go ahead and end it here. I'm wishing you the best for this eclipse season, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Hello group two. If you've decided to choose this specific solar eclipse, then this is the pile for you with this very bold and bright sunny energy. So we're going to go ahead and set it here for you for your reading on your solar eclipse and what new beginnings are surging into your life. Um, we're going to be doing that with the charms as well as several different oracle decks and the everyday tarot, which will have all of the supplies listed down below in case you're curious. But today I'm going to rough explain here how the solar eclipse 
uh, at least from my point of view as we are looking into the energies coming in. I'm not an astrologist. I don't know everything, but I do know the basics. So I just want to kind of talk about how I'm kind of seeing this coming in specifically for your guys' pile. And, and then we're going to look into the layers of it that are more specific to you. So if we look at a solar eclipse, right, here's the earth, our big, beautiful earth. The moon is going to be here, and then you have the sun. So you have the earth, the moon, the sun. The moon and the sun are both currently in the sign of Aries. And on top of that, we are in the sign of Aries for Aries season because the sun is in Aries. And, and, and Aries is a very bold, bright, surging, full of independent energy and courage. Um, it is such a intense sign when it comes to trying to get new things happening and get new like a fire started under you so this is a really really powerful energy to be working with and so all of us are going to be feeling it it's a global event and so as the the moon starts to move in front of the sun uh, I feel like the the sun is just going to be putting a surge of energy towards the moon and the moon is currently in the new moon phase which is all about new beginnings fresh new beginnings. So if we think about all of that put together, I feel like the sun for you all are currently trying to kind of kick start and put a fire under something that is a new beginning for you. So that's kind of the energy we're going to be working at at its basic form, but we'll see if other intricacies come forward for you. So with that in mind, we're going to be starting out to look into what this new moon is for you. So as we look into the new moon, right, it's all about new fresh beginnings. What is this new fresh beginning that's getting a surge of energy right now? So let's see what that fresh beginning is that's coming in for you. And do feel free to get cozy, get comfortable, um, and we'll see what we've got for you. So I'm going to take that top card of good luck, which I think is really interesting. And for those of you who might be curious, there was also friendship underneath that. So maybe this can give you some context of friendship or forgiveness. It could go either way, but I'm going to just stick with specifically good luck here. And the fact that you have all these beautiful good luck charms coming in with not only a lucky cat, for me personally, I think black cats are lucky, but you know, everyone has their own point of view. You've got all these acorns, which acorns are beautiful places to create new beginnings. You have these little ladybugs, um, dragonflies, sunflowers, the sun literally shining behind this cat. This happened also in the first pile where that eclipse energy could even be seen in the card because you have the, if you think of this cat getting in front of the sun and moving through it, that's sort of that solar eclipse energy. So it really feels like this is at the beginning, the precipice for you as we move over that sunny energy. So good luck. How could that be a new beginning for you? Basically, we're going to see more of the context as we move forward. But in general, any new beginning that you're starting right now, it doesn't even matter what it is. Any new beginning that you're starting right now has a huge, like, if you take, like, it's a 50%, it's a 20% chance of it working out. This is a highly high percentage of a chance of it working out. And that a lot of opportunities and things are in your favor, right? We have so many synchronicities here. We have so many good luck charms and good luck signs alongside these new beginnings showing up with these acorns. I feel really called to those acorns for you all, which are beautiful new beginnings. And not only are they new beginnings, but ones that are quite wise. Um, so there's a lot of really wise decision making coming forward from this card. So let's get ahead uh, not get too ahead of ourselves and start looking into the context. We know that everything right now is really in your favor, but what's in our favor, right? So let's go ahead and see what might be coming in for you when it comes to more context here. First off, you have the fool. And for whatever reason, I wanted to go kind of backwards with this little trickle down effect, but I'm feeling like I'm going to start from the top for you. So we have the fool energy showing up here all about new beginnings, fresh new starts. Sometimes, you know, this can talk about not having a lot of things in our favor. As you can see, this dog is like, you're about to fall off this cliff. And this fool is like, I'm fine. I know how to fly. You know, I know how, I know what I'm doing. So there is this naivety, the naivete that comes in from the fool card of kind of not really thinking where you're going, just flying by the seat of your pants kind of feeling where you're just sort of wandering and just sort of naively following your gut and 
in any other situation, I might tell you that that could get a little dangerous when you're doing too much of it. Um, but because you have so much good luck on your side, you know, those people in your life who like somehow, even though they're doing all of these things where you would be like, Ooh, I wouldn't do that. I don't know if I would do that. It doesn't seem like the safest idea. They somehow always just get lucky that luck is just on their side and it it works out somehow and you're maybe a little jealous maybe a little curious of how that happened but uh that's sort of the energy you're getting right now you're getting that any new beginning that you're starting right now has so much potential for it to trickle down into other parts of your life that will be really beneficial useful helpful <laughs> and just a lot of positive um optimistic energy. So we're going to be seeing how that continues to trickle down from the pool here. Okay, so we have the Lovers card as well as the Knight of Swords here. So the Lovers and the Knight of Swords. Let's go ahead and continue the full trickle. Why not? And we'll get two more cards here for you. Group two. Let's see what else. So you have the Knight of Pentacles. Ooh. So I feel like you have multiple avenues you could take right now. Like I said, any new beginning, any fresh new start, any new idea that you're planting into, into some soil and wanting to grow, whether that's a uh, career-related move, whether it's something for your home, whether it's something for you on a personal level, healing, growth, and um, a skill, whatever it might be, it's trickling down into these different places. So you might find that you're feeling one or both of these paths, but we're going to look into both. So first off, you have both the two of swords and the lovers here. And when I look at both of these, first off, they both have a choice related to them. The lovers is a very high, like a lot of people think of the lovers as a very romantic card and it can be and it can talk about soulmates and it can talk about all of these things but it also talks about making a very committed choice um, with someone or with a situation that you really love and have care and passion for and so when I'm looking at this lover's card and then also looking at the two of swords which is all about making a choice using your intuition rather your, than your intellect working more with your gut rather than your what your brain is saying you know because sometimes we can get a little bit lost in the the logical side of things and less in the literally flying by the seat of your pants just using your intuition seeing what would happen when you just follow that luck um, so there's something about needing to make a choice with someone where you're going to really need to use your intuition and to really use less of a planning, um, planner's sort of outlook and rather just follow the luck. I don't know if everyone's watched Harry Potter, but for whatever reason, this is just coming through heavily where they take like the liquid luck and Harry just like finds himself going to places he wasn't expecting and, and, um, somehow everything just kind of works out because he's taken the route of listening to luck rather than logic that's sort of the energy that you have coming in here is maybe right maybe before this eclipse you've been really heavily you know listening to your brain listening to the logic looking at the databases making sure you look at the statistics and instead of getting caught up in all of that I feel like this new beginning this new precipice this um surge of energy that this uh, celestial event is going to be bringing forward with the solar eclipse is all about needing to listen to your gut a little bit more and letting that flow into the synchronicities the signs that you're seeing and um, also finding that you get a lot of good luck when you do follow your gut alongside that like I said it might be trickling down a different way for some of you as well or a little bit of both, you have both the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Pentacles. They both are facing away from each other, which I find really interesting. In most times, I would see that as they're not communicating or they're not really working together, they're butting heads. But in this case, it kind of feels like a triple, a double threat or a triple threat, right? Um, when your energy is mixed with them, um, it's kind of like if you feel like you're surrounded, if you feel like something is kind of a brick wall in your way or something is making it so that you don't feel this good luck or you're feeling kind of down or something's just like again kind of a brick wall in your way it feels like if you're feeling surrounded they're they're right there working with you and they can cut through and make it through anything that's the energy I'm getting here um 
Also, I'm getting that this new beginning might be related to needing to use a little bit of not only your intuition, not only that good luck energy, but also listening to the signs and signal signals that you're really getting from spirit from another side because the Knight of Swords is really good at listening to, um, again, that that logic and intuition, more intuitive side, like that's what they're really listening to. Whereas the Knight of Pentacles here is taking it slow, taking their time. Um, the Knight of Pentacles uh, is the kind of, like I always think of them as like a little farmer. Sorry, it's something in my throat, but I always think of them as like a little farmer who is just planting and taking their time and something that's going to take a time to grow, but is worth your um is worth your time. So this one is a little bit less like specific where we were getting here, but it does feel like if you're feeling a little bit caught up in that intellect, that it feels more so like taking your time is going to be your best um, bet here and not trying to impulsively, impulsively fly into things, but rather um, using your intuition to guide you. That's like the, the heaviest and biggest thing coming forward here. It's not getting too caught up in the details. So let's pull you two more cards or one more card, we'll see, um, to look into some more information here. Any more roadblocks, any more things that might be surging forward, um, or anything else that might be synchronistically coming forward for you with that good luck energy and new beginning. So you have the walker here. I want to pull one more for you. Ooh. <laughs> okay, or maybe two more. We'll see. Um, so you have both the alchemist and the fate. I honestly am not feeling this card. Sometimes it happens where you're just like, this does not feel like the correct card. So I'm just going to take the alchemist here. And so when we're looking at both of these... You have the walker first, um, and it says here the unknown journey, or an unknown journey, the unknown and a journey, uh, can go either way with that comma there, but what I'm really seeing is that sun peeking out from the clouds, reminding me of that solar eclipse energy coming out from behind the moon, and all of a sudden a sense of freedom, a sense of flight, and I was talking about that with the fool, where it feels like they know where they're going, they have the luck on their side, they're like a Looney Tunes character, they're gonna get off that cliff and still be able to, if they believe in themselves enough, they're going to be able to fly. You know what I mean? That's the energy that I'm getting here where you guys are very optimistic and you're really, that's really shining through the clouds. Um, this walker is also telling me too that your journey is unknown. You don't really know where you're going. Maybe this new beginning is one of those kinds of new beginnings where you only know you began something until you're several chapters into this new story right? Sometimes we have to get several chapters, heck, halfway through the book before we realized we even started something new until you retrospectively look back or in hindsight look back and you're like, wow, wait, I think I've been on a new journey for a while, but I didn't take the time to really look at it because you were just sort of listening to your gut and seeing where it took you. So that's kind of the energy I'm getting there from the walker. But you also have the alchemist here and it says balance, invention, destruction. And so this is all about if you think of like alchemy of sort of that scientist, uh, chemist kind of energy, it's about needing to see what would happen. It's all about just experimenting. If you put this in this um, and mix it with that, what's going to happen? Maybe if I add a pinch more of this, you know? So it really feels, again, that good luck, that synchronistic energy, and that idea, too, with um, these two mixing together. It's a really good balance, right? You've got this airy listening to your, your gut energy, but also being able to put in the hard work and time and having the endurance to make it happen. Um, mixing with this alchemy is telling me that when you mix these two together, it's going to give you a lot of good luck towards any new goals that you're trying to pursue. So that's kind of where we're at, but I want to look further. We're going to get the more specific details here with the charms, but if you are enjoying this reading so far, or if you saw the solar eclipse or anything, maybe after this video, then do feel free to let me know down below in the description. But, or in the comments, and we'll go ahead and get you some charms. So let's go ahead and pull some charms for you, group two. Okay. Ooh, 
I love some of the charms that you just got here. Um, I'm immediately called to the fact that you have um, several charms here on both the Fool and even like knocking off the entire board with the number five that kind of represent games or, you know, it kind of does, it doesn't feel like someone's like playing games with you or something like that, but it feels more like you're taking risks, you're gambling, you're seeing where the roll of the dice takes you. And I really like that that's kind of the energy that's leading you here. I feel like because you did get the knight um, here, it's telling me that, um, especially like if you guys have played chess, this, this specific uh, piece can move around other players. They can be kind of sneaky. And so it kind of feels like since it fell on the fool here, I feel like a lot of you don't tend to take this route. A lot of you really stick to logic, stick to the statistics, stick to um, your plan, to your list, to a T. Um, and that may not be all of you, but this energy is coming forward of needing to take a little bit of a risk, needing to see what would happen if you let the list kind of fly away off this cliff and that it's not a form of cheating it's not a form of getting around something it's rather just a different path that you haven't taken before um i'm not really feeling a ton from this specific charm it's just like a little paper clip it can represent organizing your thoughts again working with logic and maybe that's the reason why i'm not feeling it uh you do have the goals charm showing up here this also can represent like having a a weight um, being lifted and so the entire energy here this weight is being lifted as you move into the energy that comes from this good luck the reason why good luck might be on your side as well is very apparent in the fact that you got the charm of I always think of this as um steps that the universe is taking to kind of be on your side or you can see it as a spirit guide kind of helping in the background to kind of thread your life into a way that really works in your favor so if you think of like this as different little goals that you're working on they're kind of helping to make those happen they're threading it in that good luck and so it really feels like they are on your side for sure you also have the quarter charms whenever I think of this quarter um, it can represent um, a quarterly or a, a certain amount of time so like the first quarter of a year or the quarter of a month so this can also be telling you some sort of timing uh, you also have here on the knight of um, uh, knight of swords the sewing machine and so the sewing machine whenever I see this this can just literally represent maybe this is around sewing maybe it's a creative hobby or skill uh, but I can also see it as, you know, mixing two things together because the sewing machine, right, it's sewing together two pieces of fabric and bonding them. So it can be a sense of bonding too, bonding with your intuition, bonding with a spirit guide through this as well could be a new beginning that is starting and that you're maybe experimenting with. Uh, so those are all of the charms and cards that I really have here for you for your eclipse energy um, I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the description I haven't I don't normally do a lot of astrological videos and things like that but this one felt like such a big event I couldn't help but want to do something so even if you're watching this after the the eclipse has happened this energy still lingers for quite a while so definitely feel free to see how it continues to show up in your life as the months go on um, as we head towards like a lunar eclipse which will kind of switch it around and if you did enjoy this video like I said alongside commenting do feel free to give this video a like and if you are interested in these pick a card readings or you want to see more videos on charm casting art magic and the like then do feel free to subscribe as I put out new videos every single Monday that you might enjoy I also do snail mail readings where I send a letter to you in the mail on any question or query that's been on your mind for a while for a more personal reading where I type it on a vintage typewriter. I send it to you in the mail. It's wax sealed closed for your eyes only. And they're really, really special and beautiful readings that I love to do for you all. So definitely feel free to check those out to support this space and to support yourself. Uh, and there's many other ways to support as well by the offerings that I have over on my Instagram. So thank you so much for being here with me and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.
Hello group three, if you've decided to choose this specific more in between both the silver and gold version of the solar eclipse, then this is the pile for you. Um, the reading that we're going to be doing here today is going to be with the charms as well as several different oracle decks as well as the tarot deck of the everyday tarot. I'll have all of this listed down below in case you're curious as we move through the reading. And if you're watching this way after the solar eclipse, this energy is going to be like continuing to linger for like the next six months so don't feel like you've missed out this energy is going to continue even after the monday that i post this where the solar eclipse is happening and it doesn't matter where you are in the world it's still going to be relevant because it is connected to the entire more of a global energy that's happening here today we're going to be looking more specifically on your neck of the woods um and how the the energy is coming in specifically you know, more likely for you than like a global sense, but I will quickly explain how this solar eclipse energy is kind of coming in. So if you think of the eclipse, right, it's basically the sun being blocked by the moon to um, our point of view here on the earth. So if we're thinking of this energetically, the sun is in Aries and the moon is in Aries. The moon is also in a new moon phase, which is all about new, fresh beginnings coming in. It's a perfect time to begin something and end something as well, to have something end and something new begin. And so we're going to be seeing a lot of energy about beginnings and endings coming in through this reading, but specifically with the lens of the solar eclipse with this Aries season energy. So the Aries season and the fact that both of these celestial bodies, the sun and the moon are in Aries, is telling me that this is going to be a surge of energy coming towards this new beginning. Not only is it a new beginning that's happening, but it's a new beginning that's happening with this huge amount of energy behind it. Literally the sun amount of energy behind it, um, blasting this towards us. So we're going to be seeing what surging new event, new beginning is freshening up for you. So we're going to be starting there and then trickling out to see where that might be coming in more specifically as we move through the reading. I do hope that um, explained it to the basic um, degree, but if not, do feel free to watch some other videos on the solar eclipse if you want to look into it. But we're going to go ahead and begin your reading. So do feel free to send your own energy in. Feel free to get some water, get cozy, but let's pull you some cards. So group, group three here, what new beginning is surging into your life right now? New beginning. Ooh, something around the home. Um, whether it's actually a physical home that you're trying to get, whether it's somewhere that you're renting, whether this is also just a place that makes you feel like home or a person that makes you feel like home, right? Lots of different ways that we can define home here. And it really does depend on who you are, where you are in your life. But the big beginning that's surging into your life is related to maybe getting a home working towards a project in your home, um, working on finding someone that makes you feel like home, maybe finding home within yourself, right? This could go lots of different ways, so do feel free to see how that's really kind of surging into your life as you move forward. This energy is going to continue way after the solar eclipse, so again, even if you're watching this as the eclipse is happening, or if you're watching this even six months into the future, it's still going to probably be related and an energy that even looking back you realize was kind of surging in so feel free to um, look back on this too if you're watching this many months in the future and see how this might be relating to you and how it might have related in the past but we're gonna look into more context around this I love that this home has all these really beautiful optimistic signs of um, not only a cute little uh, bird up in the top of these trees but also looking down at all this optimistic energy of these sunflowers so I think what's interesting is not all of these cards do this in this deck but this has happened in every single card that I've gotten from this deck today where you literally see a a sun in the background about to be sort of eclipsed by the thing that is in the center so this home about to be eclipsed so this is that new moon energy about to be eclipsed by the sun so this is an energy that is definitely coming in for you for this eclipse it's coming forward heavily so let's see what's happening here with the home. So group three. This could also be like dynamics within the home too, like relationship dynamics. 
So let's have a little look here. So first off, we have the Ten of Wands as well as the Knight of Cups. So this seems like something you're quite inspired to to kind of go towards. It definitely feels like something that's been on maybe your radar for a while with this, this Knight of Cups because the Knight of Cups is usually like, if you think of people who have like laser focus on something that they're super excited about or something where it's like their thing right now that's what this knight of of cups is they are very focused on this cup they're very focused on the energy that they are trying to bring in and the fact that you are so focused on it also means that you can sometimes get a bit of tunnel vision get really deeply into it you're getting your knuckles into it right if you're doing a home project right painting the walls cleaning out something reciting whatever it might be towards an actual physical home you can think of it that way is that this is just like you're so laser focused on it that you're like just pushing and pushing and pushing yourself so it can be to like yes you're getting this surge of energy but especially this time if you've already begun some of these projects you're getting like an extra surge so do be careful with yourself give yourself a little bit of of time off get some drink drink some water you know make sure you don't get burnout right this energy is so strong and is surging in it doesn't mean that it's necessarily always the best for us because we can sometimes get a little caught up in um the excitement or caught up in the the workflow of it that it can be quite exhausting so do do be careful with that so we're going to see what else might be coming in though so group three, you also have the page of swords, let's see what else, as well as the eight of cups, and then we're going to get one final top card up here, up here on the top of the roof, and we'll see what that is, as well as the five of swords, interesting, you know what, that five of swords, I know I put it out, but this card, just as I set it down, um, kind of flipped out into my lap. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one because that Queen of Pentacles is coming forward heavily. And not only that, but it was upside down in the deck. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that because I keep all of my, my cards in my deck the same direction. So the fact that it came out in my lap afterwards and like leapt out... Um, definitely tells me that, that that needed swapped out. So I'm going to go ahead and just follow my intuition with that. So, okay, let's look at this. So we already were feeling this kind of needing to take things slow. Don't get too caught up in this surge of energy to the point where you have like tunnel vision. You're not focusing on any other part of your life and you can get a little, I mean, Aries season can even be an Aries can be quite, quite bold and like pin pinhole focused on one thing. So Making sure to find a little bit of balance is definitely coming through with all of these cards as a bit of advice, but whatever this home-related um, new project, new idea, new relationship, new connection, new literal physical place... Um, whatever it might be, it seems that it's related to this Queen of Pentacles. And the Queen of Pentacles is quite abundant. They also are very nurturing. And not nurturing like some of the other um, queens can be, where it can be emotionally nurturing or um, can be co quite like confidence nurturing this in this case the the queen of pentacles is as you can see holding this pentacle and the pentacles represent our money our finances the phys the physical um things in our life our possessions the things that we inherit and own um so in this case whatever it is that you're holding here is related to your home and how you are currently at a point where you're able to maybe begin because you have the funds or you have things are lining up in the right way. You've worked really hard to be able to get to this point in your life. You've, you've worked to nurture this dream to grow. And I feel like in the past, you've maybe tried to have it grow and it just wasn't the right time because this eight of cups came through and immediately I was feeling like you had to take a hike. You had to wait it out. You've been waiting for quite a while. And this energy, since it is so surging, since it is so fast forward moving, it's telling me that things are finally getting moving again. Also, you have the page of swords on your side here too. And the page of swords, as you can see, this wind is blowing. Things are moving fast quick and swiftly so if you were waiting for things to start moving maybe you were waiting for movers wait maybe you were waiting for paperwork to go through maybe you were waiting for a message of some sort to get 
things moving and into gear, this is the timing. This is happening. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely on its way. And like I said, this energy of the solar eclipse does not necessarily happen the day of the solar eclipse, but it can happen weeks after where you start to feel it. Um, and it can move all the way until like the lunar eclipse in around six months. So it is not necessarily fast as in it's going to happen this week, but I do feel like it's fast moving in that it might have been faster than you were expecting in like the next six months. That you might get something in the mail, a new opportunity coming forward. The Page of Swords can talk about literal messages coming in, so like, again, something in the mail, paperwork going through, um, that kind of like sticky communication stuff that can get stuck. This is, it's flowing, it's moving. So that's kind of the vibe um, and energy that I'm getting here from your card so far, but I want to see a little bit more, and we'll do the charms here in a second, maybe some more about the home and how maybe you're feeling about it. Um, these specific cards are all archetypes, so we're going to be playing to see what kind of archetypes are coming forward with this, um, this phase. Ooh, the vengeance, interesting, as well as the chiromancer. Okay, so this definitely is aligning with that page of swords energy with the chiromancer here with delivering news as well as collaboration. Um, and it feels like someone literally reaching out, bringing an opportunity towards you, showcasing something you hadn't been able to see before and something that had to line up um, as in like lining up like in the same way that the moon and the sun had to line up. Um, it feels like something had you were maybe on a waiting list for something or you had to wait for something to align for this to happen. So something is lining up for you to make sure that this can come in around this time. Something you've been working really hard towards and have had to really wait and endure. Um, maybe a lot of stress and a lot of emotional swings back and forth for, but the, it's definitely aligning. And then you also have the vengeance card with overcoming slights and a choice. Very interesting how this is coming forward. Um, it kind of feels like with everything that we've been talking about already, with things aligning, the news coming in, that kind of stuff, it feels like where there were snags before, you've been kind of cut free of those snags um, that were holding you back, like anchoring you down. Um, and rather that, again, someone's reaching out to help, someone's reaching out to give you, um, to, to, to kind of cut you from these ties. So even though vengeance is kind of a really intense word, I'm more interested in the imagery that's happening here uh, than anything else. But let's see if anything comes in with the charms. So let's go ahead and pull you some charms to get the extra little details here. And if you are enjoying the reading so far, do be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below, did you see the eclipse? Um, and if you did, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Was it cloudy? Was it not? I'd love to hear, but let's go ahead and pull you some charms. So group three, solar eclipse energy. Okay, so let's have a little look here. Okay, so immediately I'm feeling called to one of the charms that hardly ever comes out. It's gotten a little scruffed up being in the, in my charm set, but it's a little pumpkin seed. And so pumpkin seeds are all about abundance, right? If you've ever opened a pumpkin and gutted one out, there are like thousands of pumpkin seeds in like one pumpkin. Don't correct me on that. I'm not for, or don't check me on that. I'm not entirely sure if it's thousands, but regardless... There's just a huge amount of abundance that comes from this. And the fact that you have the the Queen of Pentacles on your side, who is very abundant, right? There's all of these grapes to showcase that, all of these flowers. They're very abundant. It's telling me that you have the skills to be quite abundant in making this goal come forward in the way that you really wish it to. Maybe not in the perfect way, maybe not in the 
your dreams in your fantasy way, but I feel like you're quite clever. You're really good at being able to make sure that you check all the listings for a new home or to check all the little details um, to really nurture this project to come forward, to nurture this home to come forward, to nurture whatever this new beginning related to home is. I feel like you're quite clever to make sure that you're able to get the best of both worlds when it comes to the pros and cons of a situation when it comes to this new beginning. Um, you also have the Fault in Our Stars charm, kind of continuing that thread um, as that idea that, again, you're not going to be able to get the perfect home or the perfect thing, but you're going to be pretty darn close. Like You're going to find um, a really good happy medium there or just a little above medium because I really think that you have quite a cleverness, quite a you're quite savvy at, at being able to do that. And or you're also really learning how to make sure that that can happen. Maybe that's by talking to other people, the people who might be ha putting a hand out to help you. Um, or it could just be that you're really getting your bearings, researching and learning because you do have intelligent coming in here um, with the uh, sign of there we go, intelligent with the sign of Gemini. So it may be that a Gemini is one of the people that are helping you or putting their hand out to help you, especially since Gemini energy can be very, com um, they, they love to communicate and connect. And then you also have another sign showing up here with optimistic, with Sagittarius, which are very goal for, for goal um, oriented and focused. So there you are with Sagittarius as well in their sun, moon or rising. You have um, uh, the silver star with this like little hole here, which is telling me that, again, the Eight of Cups is about taking a hike, needing to retreat, feeling like you're not getting exactly what you want yet, so you're, you're going to wait it out. This is like you're, you're going to wait it out for the gold star versus the silver star, and maybe this surge of energy is going to be able to help you to make sure that that happens. Maybe an abundance of new listings come in, maybe an abundance of new people or prospects or... Um, opportunities come in for this home related beginning. You also have the cat bat here. This one loves to come out. I always find that really interesting because it usually talks about like melding two things that don't normally mix, right? <laughs> a cat and a bat. Uh, and so that's showing up over here too is that you might not get the perfect best of both worlds, but when you find like that perfect well, I mean, not perfect, that imperfect, but a really good balance of pros and cons. That's where you get sort of that cat bat. You have the spring forward charm, which can literally represent the spring season, uh, or it can represent springing forward on something again. I feel like this is the perfect time to be continuing on this project, on this goal, on this new beginning coming in because of the surge of energy coming from the solar eclipse. So that definitely makes sense with this surging energy or this spring forward energy. But I also think it's because it's going to help you to get organized um, or that it's also an energy that's not going to last forever. Whenever I see the paper clip, it, it can either represent organization, needing to get organized on something you're springing forward with, or I can see it as just needing to um, remind yourself that this surge of energy is temporary. It's a temporary hold. It's not going to be here forever, so to take advantage of it. Your last charm here is showing up here with the anchor, which I find really interesting because Vengeance here has a giant anchor, and it's something that's been split off so that someone can help you to reach out to help you. So these two are definitely connected. This idea that there are messages, there are people, there are listings, there's the internet. Someone's going to reach out, or you're going to be reaching out to kind of help yourself when it comes to making sure you don't get too anchored down on something that isn't really what you want. That's the silver star, or... or or something like that. So it really feels like there's an opportunity on its way in for you that's going to help you feel less stuck um, in moving this forward. So overall, those are all of the charms and cards and energies coming forward for you for your little solar eclipse, uh, or not little, it's going to be a big solar eclipse coming in for you. Uh, I hope you did enjoy this reading, and if you did, like I said, do feel free to like this video, it really helps the channel, and let me know in the comments down below how it connected with you, how the eclipse went for you, um, if you could see it, uh, and if not, even how it went, if you felt it on an energetic level. I would love to hear your thoughts, and if you are interested in pick a card reading, 
things like these into charm casting, art magic, grimoire tours, the like, then do feel free to subscribe as I put out new videos every single Monday that you really might enjoy. I also do uh, very specific private readings for you where I send a letter to you in the mail. It's typewritten on a vintage typewriter, wax sealed closed for your eyes only, um, with these snail mail readings that I do where it could be on any question or query or theme that you'd really like to explore. So do feel free to check those out down below, helpful reviews on my Instagram and more information there as well uh, if you're curious. So it's a great way to support yourself and this space. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and end that here. Thank you so much for hanging out here with me today. And I'm wishing you the best for this solar eclipse energy. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.